So as uh, Dick mentioned, uh, my talk is called Terminal Cornucopia. My name is Evan Booth. I go by what? How was that? Is it better? OK, I'll talk loud. If you don't need to get a hold of me, this is how. I'm on the Twitter and all that stuff. Evan Booth, I Evan, Evan Booth, not Evan Booth. OK. And boy, do I love me some America. <coughs> Just remember that <coughs> in these moments. Um, this research started, I guess, a couple of years ago. Um, well, before that, I suppose, if you want to start from the very beginning. I, as growing up, and I guess by growing up, I mean from like the time I was born until like, like just now. Um, I would uh, be in like Lowe's or Home Depot or like at the fabric store with my mom, and I would I would look around and think, if I had to defend this place from like zombies or whatever, like what would I do? Like what would I what would I like take the stuff? How would I defend it? Where, where would be my uh, you know my uh, various uh, attacks, things like that? So really, like that's kind of been a mindset of mine since I was, I was born and I love America. Um, so this research specifically started, I guess, two years ago. I was coming back from, from Vegas after DEF CON with um, Melvin and, and Beeper over then. And I was just thinking, like, man, there's a lot of really interesting stuff here in this airport. I could probably make weapons out of this stuff. I mean, I'm just, just thinking. So uh, a couple of years later and a lot of airports later, um, I am here with you now. So my thesis was simple. It's Items that are readily available for purchase in an airport terminal can be used to build potentially dangerous weapons. So how did I go about proving this thesis? <laughs> All right, so um, for one, we, we want to define a clear scope. And I am uh, not a big fan of limiting scope because it, you know, it's, it doesn't really mimic a, a real world threat generally. But when you, when you think about something like an airport, um, I, you can't really look at like, well, what can I get in? That becomes a completely different different question. The much more difficult question, of course, is, is okay, well, I'm in here now. What can I do with the stuff in hand? So uh, I wanted to use only materials that can be sourced inside an airport terminal after the security screening. And I did say um, I, would, I could walk in with a, a travel-approved multi-tool, which is this guy. And it's, it's not very big, <laughs> but you could do a lot with it. It's pretty nice. Okay. So, <laughs> yes. So what, what was Atisco? What, what am I not going to talk about with you today here? We're not going to look at the psychology of hostile takeovers. Uh, mostly because, like, with the human element, like, you could have someone with limited resources, but, you know, uh, above average intelligence and still be very effective. We're really just going to look at the stuff that you can, you can have at your disposal. We're not going to look at smuggling in prohibited items because that's a completely different question. And I mean, if you can get things in, then I mean, that makes the, the question of what you can build irrelevant. So, so we're not going to consider found objects. Now, what do I mean by found objects? Have you guys seen these around in an airport? I'm pretty sure these are honey pots because they leave them around <laughs> and like. Like, in my mind, I'm, I'm seeing a, a screen with a bunch of sweaty guys standing around it like, grab the Comet, Gra grab the spray bottle. Come on, take it. You want to. But, I mean, seriously, there's, there's a lot of interesting things here. Um, like, I'm pretty sure that's Comet, which is a, a derivative of something really nasty. Um, you got trash bags and other things like that. So, there's some grape drink. <coughs> um, <laughs> there's a black bag for black bagging yourself. Once you take a grape drink, uh, here's lemonade. <laughs> I was actually hoping one of you could tell me what that is. Cause I have, I have no. I saw, I sung into the little thing and nothing happened. I don't have any drinks for you, sir. But thank you. <laughs> okay, this is a human neck-sized vice grip. And it comes with a chain, <laughs> built in. So, so there's that. Uh, there's the born legacy. 
Those are handy. Now, you know, okay, so you gotta think this is an airport and there's people watching things. If you took that, someone would notice, right? They would be like, well, crap, there's a, there's a giant red thing missing. But every single store in that place has got one of these stuck behind the counter. And a lot of people don't pay attention to that sort of thing. And all of America. Um, defibrillators, these things. Now, you know, if you, if you were to open this door, an alarm would go off and people would come out in suits. But if you sit around long enough, and I had sat around long enough, they occasionally they'll roll by these medical carts, right? Like with the stretcher and all that stuff. It's a little mobile unit. And they've got these kind of loosely on the back where people aren't walking. So you could probably snag one, hypothetically. Okay, what else? Um, we're not gonna talk about aircraft vulnerabilities. Like, uh, you know, if you flush the, the toilet twice while whist whistling Dixie, then like a cruise ship will just stop somewhere. And like Christmas is canceled. Good job. We're not gonna talk about the effectiveness of specific government agencies. <laughs> because honestly, that's the kind of thing that kills my inner child. And my inner child wants to build weapons. <laughs> okay, so if we're gonna make weapons, we, we kinda have to know generally what we're gonna do with them. And I say basic because these, these are really basic. So what are basic attack vectors on an airplane? Okay, so you wanna injure people, sometimes to death. So there's that, uh, cause panic. And I don't just mean like, you know, for the heck of it, like people do this uh, in reality and they're, they're called probing, they're probing. They're trying to see what people are gonna do, right? If they, if they do things that are just weird, you know? Like uh, I think of some uh, band of musicians from a, a foreign country of some, some sort, they were on an airplane and like as soon as that fastened seatbelt sign turned off, they all stood up and started walking. It was like, oh, I'm walking. And they did that for like a half hour. And so people started freaking out. I mean, if you could only imagine. So they did that just to see like what people would do. And they spent like hours in the bathroom. And it's like <laughs> so something else you might want to do is identify and disarm the marshal. <laughs> That's not funny. Why is that? <laughs> yeah, that guy. Okay, so these last two are kind of the holy grail. So most people are trying to either get in the cockpit or they are trying to damage the aircraft to death sometimes. So, but those two are really tough, right? Because post 9-11, you know, they put a lot of fail safes in place. It, okay, so if I'm gonna make weapons out of stuff, right, um, I, I wanted to do a little research into makeshift weaponry. So I, I started looking around, and necessity is, is invention's mom. And so I looked into, uh, I looked into prison, right? So like that's one place where you, you have limited resources and, and you still wanna hurt people. So uh, an attacker wants to hurt people. Uh, you guys. Um, this is actually a shotgun that uh, was made in prison out of bed rails, and they used uh, ground up match heads and bits of tin. And uh, this was actually used in a successful escape, and it was fired during the event, and they, they shot it like bulletproof glass just to show that they were messing around. But it was interesting, they, they, they drew a current across a filament from a light bulb, and that actually ignited the, uh, the gunpowder, the gunpowder, the match heads. You know. Quote, unquote. This is a knuckle duster. It's made from, uh, looks like a hacksaw blade and some padding. That's a mace. That reminds me of Lord of the Rings, right? The little, okay. So um, they confiscated this before it was used, but um, it could either be used as, as a weapon, obviously, but also to pry up um, the uh, Constantino wire. This is a double barreled pistol, and it's pretty sexy, right? You don't have to agree. Um, <laughs> It also used uh, match, uh, match heads, ground up match heads and tin. So I don't actually know how they were gonna light that off. Maybe so a hole in the top. Um, this isn't a weapon, this is a hash pipe. <laughs> but I, I thought it was interesting and, and some people are lovers, not fighters. <laughs> Here's a whip with uh, a countersink on the end and a bunch of razor blades. That looks like fun. That's a crucifix shift. <laughs> which looks more like a prop from a movie. But um, speaking of shivs, right, that's like 98% of, of prison stuff. So these were the notable exceptions, and, and this was a pretty cool one. So um, when you talk about shivs, like there's a basic math formula. I've, I've worked this out. So you take anything harder than skin, <laughs> and you raise that to a point, and you add dookie, and <laughs> you got a shiv. That's, so it's, it's not terribly interesting, but I'm still waiting to hear back from the Nobel Peace Prize Committee for this formula. 
Okay. We'll see what happens. Um, so I looked into Fallout, the, the post-apocalyptic world of Fallout, because they have a lot of makeshift weaponry in there. And I just really like that game. So I looked at this guy. <laughs> this guy. He's carrying a missile. <laughs> I would have loved to have been on that photo shoot. Give them a missile. I looked at these guys. They've done their fair share of, of weaponry over the years. So hats off to them. Uh, I looked into this. Anyone read this? It's, uh, it's got a very nice structure to it. They talk a lot about um, you know, the fundamentals. So what have other people done? Like real world attacks. So you've got the, the, the shoe bomb, right? You heard about this? Guy packed his shoe full of, yes? Hey, oh, hey. Hey, yeah, shoe bomb. So, <laughs> I think he used PTP and he, he used a traditional fuse. And in the process of trying to light the fuse, he got um, curb stomped or something. <laughs> so this is this was pretty clever, right? I guess this is why you take your shoes off now. Um, so this guy, he he decided that that having the explosive, um, uh, uh, it wasn't quite quite close enough to his crotch, so he put it in his underwear. And um, he also failed. And I think the trouble with these things is tough to ignite them. So um, this guy, he was caught as well. And they cut up his underwear. And it looks like a bird now. I, you know. <laughs> All right, so what makes a, <laughs> what makes a weapon? Like, so let's, let's talk about just the, the fundamental bits. Because if you're going to make weapons, you kind of need to know what makes them work. So let's look at melee first. What are the components of melee? You want something with good weight, good balance. Uh, length is definitely a, a plus because you don't have to get up in someone's grill. Uh, durability is wonderful. If it's got an edge to it, that's bonus points, right? Because you can cut folks. So um, examples of this would be like a club, staff, a nail board, a mace, some chucks, a uh, sword, axe, dagger, you know, the common stuff. Uh, the pros to uh, melee weapons. Uh, they're simple to build and they're fast. Um, they're a lot less likely to fail because they're a lot less complicated. Uh, they're um, uh, but that was a, no, that's actually a con. <laughs> Ignore that one. <laughs> There's no reload time. So the cons. <laughs> I'm going to do that every time. So you must be in close proximity to your target, right? It's kind of a given. Um, effective blunt melee weapons, they tend to be bigger. And uh, it's really harder to attack with the element of surprise. So, you know, you tend to notice the guy in the airplane with a giant bat <laughs> walking towards you. And if you don't, you probably shouldn't work there. So what about ranged weapons? So what we need is a, some kind of energy source, right? Uh, so that could be like extraction of your muscle if you're throwing the spear. Um, could be expansion of gases. Could be like a spring or elastic. So like think a bow and arrow. Um, could use gravitational plus like a you know, focal lever, think like a trebuchet. Could use electricity. So um, what you need is a channel for the projectile, so you could aim somewhat, you don't shoot yourself. Um, a projectile, and something to trigger this. So examples would be like a spear, a sling, a slingshot or a sling bow, a blowgun, blow, uh, bow and arrow, <laughs> or a crossbow, something like a trebuchet or a catapult, or like a rail gun, which you totally can't build in an Air Force. <laughs> Not yet. <coughs> Throws, subtlety, right? So the attacks require less overall motion. You could probably be in your seat still and get off an attack without someone knowing. Um, these are better for crowd control, I think, because people are, they fear the next shot, right? Um, and also that range. Guns. Uh, they typically need more parts. They're a lot more difficult to construct. They're a lot more time consuming to build. And uh, potentially more difficult to conceal. So what about flexibles? Like flexibles. So you need links of strong, durable material and the bonus points for spikes or sharp elements. So just think like a traditional graduated braid bull whip or cat of nine tails. So these things have improved reach over melee weapons. They are terrifying. Um, the cons are it's nearly impossible to use on an airplane. <laughs> and you're going to get it tangled up and get curb stopped and you're not Indiana Jones. These are all, <laughs> these are all big problems. So explosives. Uh, components of an explosive, you need some kind of reaction that causes a very rapid energetic expansion, right? And then in some cases, you need a container that would rather not have its rapidly contracting uh, materials ex you know, leave, leave the container. Um, you also need some kind of fuse or catalyst. So um, 
like an expansion from a chemical reaction would be like a Drano bomb, something like that. Something that just grows outside of the size of its container and causes an explosion. So um, otherwise you might have like a high explosive that probably just explodes because it burns so freaking quickly. Pros are pretty obvious, right? I mean, it's a bomb. So it um, could be used as a diversion if it's smaller. Um, and this is damage on a grand scale, typically. The cons are the materials are extremely difficult to synthesize or source. Um, if you do manage to find one, I'd say it'd be pretty difficult to ignite, just based on history there. Um, less flammable materials, which some are available, require a lot more oxygen to, to really burn. So that's an issue. Some other things are uh, electricity. So think like a taser, uh, like nerve agents and stuff like that. That's man, humans kind of suck. Um, uh, what about diversions or fear agents? So like in prison, people would often make fake weapons, you know, so they can uh, stage an attack. Um, any kind of smoke or gas, harmful or otherwise, on a plane, that's bad news. Also fire. <laughs> um, they, they, uh, I thought about poison because like, I don't know, they serve drinks and things like that. So um, also body armor. So what's next? Let's identify the materials that are available. So to do this, I went shopping. <coughs> so I hit LaGuardia, JFK, Ronald Reagan National, RGU, right around the corner, Charlotte Douglas International, I love America. And so uh, in the process of doing this, I noticed there are tons and tons of stores. Thank you. Man, you are on it. There are tons and tons of stores, but like, if you distill it down, there's only just a couple types, right? So you've got like overpriced convenience store with tchotchkes. And so in here, you might find uh, lots of stuff, gum, drinks, plastic, chocolate, candy, other counter medication, uh, you can get some baby powder, sanitizer, wipes, Axe body spray, disposable razors, dental floss, condoms, safety pins, cigarette lighters, magazines, a bunch of stuff, right? Some power adapters, um, some electronics things here and there. Uh, the souvenirs are interesting because you can get little um, die-cast toy airplanes, things like that. And you can buy luggage and keychains. You've got Duty Free, which is kind of your, your overpriced fragrances, frag fragrance, frag fragrances, makeup and booze category. Um, you get confections here, leather goods, handbags, fragrance, fragrance. Yeah, seriously. Spray stuff that smells good. <laughs> <laughs> Sunglasses, you get your wine and your whiskey. Cosmetics, jewelry, watches, and tobacco. Um, you got overpriced electronics. And I hope you guys are noticing a trend here. <laughs> here you'll find lots of headphones, some external USB batteries, more headphones, phone cases, laptop bags, portable speakers, iDevice docks, small electronics like e-readers, audio players, you'll find cameras, Bluetooth headsets. I feel like this list is really long. Uh, portable gaming consoles and wearable cameras and alarm clocks, alarm clocks. So um, overpriced gadgets for Brookstone, you've got luggage, sound machine, personal massagers, e-readers, USB batteries, uh, wireless charging mats, RC helicopters and those quadcopter things are pretty neat. Um, RC video surveillance cars, pocket projectors, groomy electronics, things like a, like a nose hair trimmer. And do use your imagination of like the things, the parts that go into these things. I'm saying them. Uh, phone cases, DC power inverters, alarm clocks, travel accessories, headphones, hickeys, which are elastic shoelaces, travel pillows, hair dryer, and a steam iron. <sighs> Okay. Oh. Santa Montana. Yes. <laughs> I'm just going to agree. <laughs> gotcha. It all makes sense now. Okay, so you can also get your nails done and get a massage. So here, like, you get nail polish, some beauty supplies, maybe some cotton, and you get your nails did. Overpriced designer stuff. Wristwatches, pocket watches, jewelry, handbags, belts, miscellaneous leather goods, plumbers, and umbrellas. We're almost through this. Overpriced sports stuff. So like you might find athletic attire, belts, golf balls, um, many novelty helmets, many basketballs, and sports. So this was the really interesting one. This, this really varies uh, depending on your, your location, obviously, because this is your overpriced regional goods. And this is where I found the most stuff, and I love America. So like the Smithsonian Museum store, um, there's, there's too much stuff to list here, but like I found these giant crystal pointy things. <coughs> <laughs> Had some heft to them. Oh, and rocks, giant rocks. Yes. 
Frisbee, Hannah Montana, frisbee-sized rocks. Uh, this thing, <laughs> which that's a hat for a very sad man. <clears throat> you find some of overpriced food. So like you could get metal silverware here, glass, sustenance, aluminum foil, coffee stirs, hot beverages, and hot sauce. So here's Mecca, Cinnabon. <laughs> this is where you go for delicious cinnamon treats. What did I find? Okay, so the, the following list are all things that I, I didn't use and build. So this is certainly not exhaustive, but things that were interesting to me would like be like a die cast airplane, right? <laughs> Thinking that you might be able to file that down and it'd be terrifying. Axe body spray. Baby powder. Unfortunately, this is not the cornstarch ba baby powder. This is flammable, flammable baby powder. <coughs> this is the talc-based stuff. I was disappointed too. <laughs> um, bubble gum, Diet Coke, and Mentos. <laughs> disposable cameras, disposable razors. Some of these. Uh, that's an external USB battery. This is a, a an inch and a half diameter glass sphere. I'm gonna get this one. I'm gonna throw it in the close view. Pass that around. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that just happened. <laughs> so they had a whole bin full of those, and they're, they're basically really hard, heavy things. <clears throat> uh, hair thingies, Lysol spray, metal shot glasses, safety pins, steam iron. All right, so what was next, right? I'm going to build some stuff. So before I get into the builds, I, I want you guys to keep in mind that, that like, all of these are like first try. This is like Mark 0 0.1 weapons, right? So this is me sitting down thinking like, I'd like to build this, and then trying pretty much one time and getting it. So um, that said, like the effectiveness of these particular weapons is, is a, you know, a, at a certain level, but like all of these can be scaled up very, very easily using you know, just more, more things basically, more of the same thing. And overall, I would say, I probably looked at maybe 20% of the stuff that I've got in my mind right now. So, what about a workspace? Where are you gonna do this stuff? Well, the family bathrooms are nice. They've got locks. They've got uh, cover noise, power, water, tiny bacon dispenser. <laughs> you got a workbench. This is nice. What else? Well, let's get into the builds. Okay. So for build number one, I took a double-walled tumbler. Oh, quick caveat. So these are the exact things that I use, right? But this stuff can be uh, swapped out for whatever you happen to have on hand. So double-walled tumbler, <laughs> an AR drone, which I didn't buy because they're like $400, but I used a, a different one. Um, Zippo lighters, and what does that get you? That gets you an adorable blowgun, right? And so, uh, We've got a, a, little, a little rod that's sharpened to a point and a bit of cop, uh, cotton from the inside of a Zippo. And you're blowing that through a, a couple tumbler straws. And really, like, I, this is adorable. So the only reason I included this is like in testing, like, like this would go through someone's neck pretty easily. <laughs> pretty far. <laughs> so like, I don't know if you'd want to like, you know, really do much with this or just hack or anything. Right. So, I want to test it now. Oh, there's no audio. It is in. <laughs> it's definitely in. Okay, let's see that again. Ah, how? <laughs> yeah. So, so that happened. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, build number two, and that, that I think you'd scale up naturally by just making making the parts bigger and the stuff heavier. And having a good set of lungs helps too. So <laughs> I played trumpet for a long time. So, um, so build number two. I took magazines, not those specific, okay, easy. And I read them too. Uh, Lady Liberty fridge magnets <coughs> that are very pointy. Braided leather belts, um, and I actually ended up you know un unraveling these and using that as cording. Scotch tape. And what does that get you? That gets you the chucks of liberty. <laughs> so, all right. 
So I rolled up these magazines and I used scotch tape, to, a lot of scotch tape to get this thing to, as tight as possible. I ran a strand, a couple strands of leather in this leather <laughs> through the middle and I obviously um, used uh, the rest of it to lash on all the ladies. <coughs> It's not, that, that's not at all, not really. USA, USA, USA. What's happening right now? <laughs> all right, so, here we go. <coughs> see what went wrong. <laughs> we need an engineer. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I really, I really wish I could do a backflip because I totally would have done that clip from like the internet like a thousand years ago where the guy had chucks and he did a backflip and went on his face. And, like the best part is that he's still trying to go with it. <laughs> he was falling. Look it up. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so at first you don't succeed, <coughs> swap out the melon for a, a much harder target, like a coconut, which is uh, arguably more tough than a, a human skull, <coughs> but smaller, so it's kind of weird. Um, <coughs> and the, the issue there was I didn't use real leather belts, because I bought like 10 of them, and they're expensive. So I use like the fake stuff that's like just, just a little tougher than lamb stool. So, <coughs> Round two, I used a lot of strands of dental floss. Oh, hang on. What am I doing? I've got the Chucks of Liberty. They're in here. That's a lot of condoms. Let's see. Oh, here they are. And do they are beat up. I've only got one lady left. So, pretty hard. All right. They did, well, they didn't have to. So, okay, a good byproduct of, of like, of, so the ladies, I, I really wish they were metal, but they weren't. They're like some composite material that are pretty tough if you hit it right on. But it's like an added bonus, like they break off in whatever you hit. It was creepy. They're all over the floor in there. It looked like teeth or something. <laughs> Bill number three. I took a hair dryer, compression socks, an umbrella. I actually just used the shaft of the umbrella. And umbrellas, real quick, are literally, they're like the, uh, they're to, to airports what, what buffalo are to Native Americans. You use every part of them. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I got, they've got a bin full of them. And, and it's like, it's like a small, portable thing full of mechanical pieces that fit together well, right? Yeah, so, all right, took braided leather belts, took condoms. <laughs> and that gave me <coughs> Planned Parenthood. <laughs> no. This is Planned Parenthood. And this is a sling bow. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with the term sling bow, but it's kind of like, like a child between, a, it's like a, the mix between a, a, a slingshot and a crossbow, or a bow and arrow. So this is small. Basically, um, I used the strands from the leather belt to keep everything together and also to um, you know, kind of latch onto the condoms that I, I kind of braided together. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to tie lubricated <laughs> condoms together. <laughs> it's like herding cats. <laughs> and then trying to put condoms on them. <laughs> YouTube, um, the fiberglass umbrella chef. So around back, you've got these condoms. <coughs> and I used the strip of compression hosiery, and that's completely optional, but I, I wanted that on so the, the fiberglass shaft did not tear up the condoms. And I don't know if you guys have, have ever like messed with fiberglass. It's terrible, man. Look at this stuff. It's gnarly. Do you know what that is? A billion splinters. <laughs> like, see, you look at it long enough, and you, the stuff gets into your skin, and you can't get it out because it's invisible. Oh, yeah. That's, that's painful. 
So, okay, um, a quick note with that. Like, I use three condoms on each side. If I were, like, going to use this thing, I'd probably ramp that up maybe four or five times, right? And that could become a lot, a lot more powerful. I'd also use a, a thinner projectile, I think. So build number five. We take a robot driver creepy uncle thing. <laughs> <laughs> you mix that with magazines. The umbrella, this time we're using the spokes of the umbrella. Scotch tape, dental floss, double wall tumbler, a luggage handle. And what does that give you? A crisp air. <laughs> Which is internet for crossbow. <clears throat> And in case, in case you guys were wondering what the luggage handle's doing, yes, that would be your collapsible stock. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. I didn't have to do that, but I, I was so excited. <laughs> so, basically what we've got is the ribs of the umbrella kind of uh, through the tip of this thing. Um, using dental floss as a string, which wax the dental floss is great because it like once you roll it, it stays together. It's like one you make a rope out of it, big waxy rope. That should be a band name. <coughs> Take the rib. I'm using the, the rib of an umbrella as the projectile as well. Ideally, you'd want something heavier, something metal, but this worked just fine. Um, and of course, tying it all together would be the uh, Galaxy Driver and some magazines and scotch tape. This is the trigger mechanism. It's essentially. Uh, a piece of metal that I got out of the luggage, the handle of the luggage, that um, is just kind of bent. And um, as soon as you rotate that trigger, it releases the ring, which releases your arrow. So let's try it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so again, like, if I were scaling this up, I would probably use five or six of those ribs, and it'd be a lot harder to load, and it shoot a lot harder as well. Build six. I took magazines, scotch tape, dental floss, the Constitution <laughs> of the United States, which, which I love so much. <laughs> now, this is a metal pencil sharpener. They had it mislabeled on the shelf. It was actually, it just said, metal spike for, for hurting people. Oh, that's why I bought it. So, uh, <laughs> when you put all that together, let's see. You end up with America. <laughs> and that is, in fact, a spike a spec bat. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot heavier than it should be. <clears throat> so, how did we build this? We took uh, rolled up magazines. <laughs> you reinforce that with a lot of scotch tape and braided leather belts and then a lot of dental floss, which works surprisingly well. And then you get this. I want to watch that again. <laughs> You know, it's funny because that, that's the first, like, the first thing I tried the first time I like hit a coconut. And I didn't, I didn't know if it was gonna work or not. I had my assumptions, obviously, so I was a little surprised at how effective that was. Um, build number seven, and actually, this is probably the, the scariest one. Um, I took Zippo lighters, disposable lighters, which yes, they sell, and yes, you can buy Zippos in an airport. Um, a Parrot Air drone, or in my case, I had a, a different remote control helicopter, it's all the same thing basically. Um, scotch tape, and that got me this. And this is a remote detonator. <coughs> yeah, I love America. Um, so this is it getting cuddly with the, the transmitter. Um, basically, this is, uh, I'm using uh, the flint, the flint wheel from a Zippo. I've got that hooked up directly to the brushless motor, and that is resting on the uh, the flint from a disposable lighter, and the spring is pushing it up in there. So, basically, what you get is is like a, a really, really anxious lighter, and it works pretty well. Let me add 
the flint was basically gone at this point. <laughs> like there are, there are usually a lot more sparks than that. But, I, but it goes pretty quickly, turns out, when you have it hooked up to a motor. <coughs> Uh, a really important note from, from that last build was that I was using a receiver and transmitter that communicates line of sight through infrared light. So the one they sell at Brookstone, that you control with your smartphone over Wi-Fi. Wait, what's your phone? Well, it's ad hoc. <laughs> you know, yeah, so, so what does this mean, right? So this means like you, you don't necessarily even have to be on the plane so long as you can communicate with this thing. All right, so uh, some additional things that I, I want to try, or I thought were too simple to, uh, to really do a full build on. Um, using Books Body Armor, I did some research, and it looks like about 500 pages can stop a nine millimeter hollow point, which is, I, <laughs> I really did think about it, so, <laughs> so then I thought some more. Okay, so, uh, take <laughs> Not everything has a funny name, you know? <laughs> what would you call that? Oh, man. All right, so I think all of you, I'll, I'll take it, drink. Um, if you take uh, the capacitors from disposable cameras, uh, they also include transformers, so you can charge, the, charge them up and as soon as they touch uh, any, anything metal or skin, um, they discharge rapidly, and um, that's actually a good amount of voltage. So what you can do is you can step that up with multiple capacitors and more batteries and more transformers. And it was something pretty nasty. Wouldn't like it doesn't get like near actual taser range, but um, it probably annoys someone a lot. <laughs> um, take axe and the Zippo um, and tape. You can make a tossable fireball. Those uh, Zippo lighters they pride themselves of being windproof. So, <laughs> so figure that one out. Uh, I also wanted to make uh, hydrogen gas through electrolysis. Um, specifically, what I wanted to do with the hydrogen gas. I'm, I'm not going to tell you yet. <laughs> That's for the next talk. <laughs> uh, also use stomach acid, which is essentially hydrochloric acid to um, synthesize more dangerous compounds. So hydrochloric acid is used in a lot of, a lot of those uh, things. I'm not a chemist, obviously. But, um, also wanted to, to create a distiller out of the steam iron and reduce vodka down to uh, food-grade alcohol, which is um, also known as what? Anyone know? Everclear. No one went to college. Would be fun. Um, also, I want to create a shiv that uses pressure from aerosol to inject air into your, your target's <laughs> bloodstream. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> so, okay, so um, I couldn't help but think of a few, a few potential attack vectors that could be feasible given um, you've got some of this stuff. Um, so, number one, let's say an attacker books a first class seat review of the cockpit door. What? You came late. I'm sorry. Okay, so, so you go to the family restroom or you go to the nap room. It's like a room that's private that people leave you alone in for long periods of time. Al, everybody. <laughs> so you would wait for the, um, the pilot in command or the co-pilot to exit the flight deck to use the restroom because that happens. Upon their return, the attacker uses a ranged weapon from the seat to incapac incapacitate them just after they open the cockpit door, creating just a few seconds of utter panic and chaos. Um, and it's usually when, when this happens, and, and um, you know, I've seen this happen a few times, and I, I totally didn't find the flight attendant training manual on mine. Um, what they'll do is they'll, they'll kind of jury rig a, a, a beverage cart like through the gangway, so you can't, I mean, like, can't jump over a beverage cart this time. But anyways. Um, with that gap of time, you could potentially get to the door. So the thought process is here is it like keep them from being able to shut the door, right? Because there's a person in the way that is preoccupied with the arrow that's in their arm now. <laughs> <coughs> so number two, um, sacrifice the seat towards the front of the plane, stuffs a bag full of flammable materials like wood coffee stirs, paper, et cetera, along with one of those airplane mode detonators. They place that bag in an overhead department near the rear of the plane. And uh, upon triggering it with your smartphone, 
um, it would catch fire, of course, and um, the crew would rush back to deal with that fire. And all the while, you would pull this out of your carry-on. <laughs> and you would, you would find the point on the airplane that's on the other side of that. Does anyone know what that is? It says, cut here in case of emergency. It's like the soft spot on an airplane. <laughs> so that's probably uh, the one spot that doesn't have like really heavy um, uh, supports and, and like it's intentionally built that way. So, uh, plausible attack number three. Atta attacker stuffs a bag full of flammable, flammable materials um, along with an airplane mode detonator and places it somewhere else. Once that goes off, the oxygen masks deploy and um, oxygen makes things burn really well. So the <laughs> attacker cuts the oxygen line, places a secondary detonator in the overhead cavity from whence the, uh, the masks came, and then goes somewhere else and lights that off. And have a safe flight home. <laughs> <laughs> and there's my contact information once again. We're doing good on time. I don't have any questions. <laughs>